My name's Glenn Dromgill. I'm the president of Tier One Engineering. We're a consultancy company based in Santa Ana, California, and we've been tasked with the responsibility of developing this helicopter behind me, the electrification of the Robinson R44. It is a project we've been working on for the last four years. Uh, it's funded by Lung Biotechnology. It's a subsidiary of United Therapeutics, a company founded by Martin Rothblatt, who's really the uh, visionary behind this project. I'm a mechanical engineer. I have a master's in mechanical engineering. I specialize in structural composites. Uh, I'm from Auckland, uh, New Zealand. Uh, I went to the University of Auckland, graduated in 96, and had the opportunity to travel to the United States and work for a startup aircraft company in Oklahoma, who was particularly interested in building a, a composite aircraft. And I worked in the industry, uh, starting with general aviation. I moved to Florida, worked uh, on some other startup programs there, and then eventually came out to California, worked for Gulfstream, Boeing, Northrop Grumman on the Joint Strike Fighter program, and then back to Boeing. And after about 10, 15 years, I decided that I'd start a consultancy company and support uh, some of the large OEMs with engineering development work. And we started a company called Tier One Engineering. It focused on composite technology. Uh, we would engineer composite parts and manufacture them. And then in around 2015, I heard about Martin Rothblatt and her effort to try and find someone that would support her idea of developing an electric helicopter for the delivery of human organs. And she had been going around some of the large companies trying to gather support for this project she wanted to pursue. And there was very little belief in her idea. She was told it was impossible, battery technology wasn't there, or at least 50 years away. And I heard about this and I thought, well, that uh, sounds like a real challenge, interesting project. I'll reach out to her, send her an email. And uh, she responded. and. Uh, she said, let's meet at X Prize. So we had a, a meeting in Los Angeles that year. She laid out her idea. She'd done a, a lot of hand calculations. Uh, she'd based it on the performance of her Tesla. And she's a, a tremendous aviation enthusiast, a helicopter pilot. So she knew the power requirements for a helicopter. She laid out her idea and she asked what I thought. And I said, well, it could be a possibility. Let me go away and look at it. So I took, the, took her notes and reviewed them. And after a week or so, I got back and said, hey, you know what, let's give it a go. And she signed us up. Lung biotechnology is developing human organs. They manufacture human organs and they have several technologies to do that. And they need to deliver the organs from the manufacturing facility to the hospital fairly quickly. There's a short period of viability from when the organs manufactured or removed from the, the organism to uh, transplant in the hospital. And Martin's anticipating a, a large volume of organs needing transportation. She'd need a large fleet of conventional helicopters and pilots to do so. So she said, well, let's set a goal of delivering these organs using green helicopters. And that's really the motivation behind this project. So she laid out some requirements for the vehicle it's uh, for the electric helicopter, it's one hour of flight time. It's a one hour recharge. It's a 600 pound payload. So that would be two pilots and uh, the organ payload as well. She gave us a, the option of using a helicopter or a clean sheet design. So we looked at various options from tilt wings to tilt wing helicopters to conventional fixed wing uh, to tilt rotors and six, it, it was a six month effort. We came back with a proposal uh, to develop a, a tilt, uh, tilt wing aircraft. That's a huge undertaking. Having gone through certification of aircraft, uh, it's a very difficult task. We're using conventional uh, piston engine technology or turbine en engine technology. So we thought, okay, what's the best way to step into this technology 
and the best way to do so is to take a conventional certified aircraft, such as a Robinson R44 uh, that has a piston, heavy piston engine, in this case a 500 pound engine, remove that engine, use that 500 pound uh, useful mass for batteries and a lightweight engine. So uh, we proposed that to her and she thought that's a great idea. Let's see what we can do using commercial off the shelf technology. At the time there was very little uh, information, very little uh, technology available in uh, electric vehicles. And there's a tremendous hesitation from industry to embrace anything in aviation. The, the risk is perceived to be quite high. So we found a few suppliers who were willing to work with us who had developed EV road vehicles. Uh, we partnered with those. One was uh, Brahmo Motorcycles who provided the batteries. Uh, Reinhardt Motion Systems who provided the motor controller that converts the DC power to the AC power of the motor. And then the motor itself was provided by Yasa, uh, Yasa Motors. A lot of vendors that we went to showed no interest at all. As soon as we told them we were doing electric flight, they told us we were crazy and they wanted, wanted, us, wanted us to run away from them. Our goal was to produce an equivalent to the Lycoming IO540 engine. So the same amount of power, the same response. We felt for ease of certification and for safety, we'd leave the drive system in touch, in, intact. So we left the spray clutch in place the belt drive system, it's really not needed for electric propulsion. The electric motor produces so much torque from zero RPM. So we, we built the helicopter. It was about three months of planning, about six months of building, and then we moved into ground test. And it, it worked very well. Um, the helicopter has very low vibration. It doesn't start like the Lycoming. It's very smooth, it's quiet. Uh, we got through the ground test phase and we thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun to lift off and go for a little flight? So we broke the rules with the ASA and uh, went for a flight and put it up on YouTube. You can see the video on YouTube. And uh, within a, a day or so of the video posting, I got a call from the ASA legal department, very upset, saying we broke the contract. And then an hour later after that, I got a call from their sales team saying that's great. It's the best thing we've seen. It's great publicity. Can we get a copy of the video? We've moved away from individual suppliers of the, of the three critical components. The motor, the motor controller and the battery, we're doing in-house development now. We feel that the market is so small and it's so specialized that the only way to really develop a, a highly optimized system is to do it through vertical integration, do it in-house. So the, the pack that you see behind me now is our second generation battery pack. The first generation, as I said earlier, used the Brahmo uh, motorcycle battery pack or batteries on a sled. We've since refined that. That was originally 1,100 pounds of weight. We've reduced it now to 750 pounds. It has the same energy. So there's a significant improvement in energy density of the, the storage system there. And it gives you an idea over three or four years what sort of trajectory we were on in terms of battery improvements. Certification is a long road and there's a lot of hurdles to overcome, but the battery technology needs to develop further too. So it's giving us an opportunity to integrate new battery technology into the design, improve the range of the helicopter our ultimate goal is one hour of flight time. So that would be a 40 minute flight with a 20 minute VFR reserve. We expect to see that uh, technology move from automotive into uh, aviation. So operationally, we don't see any changes in the vehicle. Performance, we don't anticipate any changes either. There are some benefits of electrification. The vibration is much lower than the the IO540, you do not have the torque pulsing that a piston engine generates and uh, the fatigue that that uh, can cause on the drivetrain. So we anticipate there could be some improvements in the, uh, the fatigue life of the airframe and the drivetrain and we may be able to extend the 
uh, service interval from 2200 hours outward. So that, that's an area that we're going to look at. We, we do not have the intention to be the operator, we are the developer of this technology. We're an R&D organization, we're a technology developer. The Lycoming IO540 has many other applications in other aircraft and we think that's really the next step for electrification is to move into the retrofit, retrofit market, uh, fixed wing aircraft. Companies like Harbour Air are already doing it, Ampere, we think they've got, uh, it's a good business to be in. We like their approach, we think it's realistic. Uh, I think flying cars and some of the Urban transportation ideas are great too, but I think that's much further out there in the future. And this is really the stepping stone for electrification in the aviation field. When we started the effort, we had a team of about three or four engineers. Uh, the engineers all have a, a can-do attitude, they're aviation enthusiasts, many of them are pilots or home builders. The team was very small and then we moved into a up to a team of around 12 with approximately six to eight consultants supporting the STC effort here. So if you'd like to come and work and join the project, please look us up on the web, www.tier1engineering.com. The one is the number one. And uh, I'd like to see uh, lots of hands-on, can-do attitude engineers. Uh, we're, we're hiring and uh, we'll respond to any inquiries. Thank you.